what this is is the ability for the United States government to pay for things that Congress has already committed us to paying for. And uh, as, a, as a result, this has been a routine vote. Uh, it's happened more than 40 times since Ronald Reagan was president. Never before has a party threatened to not pay our bills except for 2011. Well, with this Republican Party, never before has become the new normal, and they're doing it again. Take a listen to Speaker John Boehner this morning on ABC. We are not going to pass a clean debt limit increase. Under no I told the president, there's no way we're going to pass when the votes are not in the House to pass a clean debt limit. And the president is risking default by not having a conversation with us. You gotta love those compromising Republicans, once again willing to let the country default for the first time ever, just, well, because, just because. And let's not blame the Speaker's problems on President Obama. Speaker Boehner doesn't have the votes because he has no control over his own party. So what is the President gonna do come October 17th when we actually run out of money? Joining me now, CNBC senior economics reporter Steve Leisman and President of the Brennan Center for Justice, Michael Waldman, thanks to you both. So I wanna start by, looking at 2011, because we know even though we didn't breach the debt limit, there were economic consequences. Yeah. Steve, I want to talk about that a little bit. So it's not, you know, theoretical to suggest that even no. just getting to this point no. has consequences for the economy. And if you don't mind, it's not its not theoretical that you have to bring a constitutional lawyer and a financial reporter together <laughs> to understand what's going to happen in That's, the next two weeks. We thought that would be the best because, way to approach it. Well, this. it's exactly right, because it, it, it's all... Okay, so, so you have the market, and it all depends on how serious... Uh, the market believes that this threat is going to be. Right now, it's pretty interesting that the market is not really all that concerned. They've been here before, mm -hmm. and they think they've kind of, uh, you know, cried wolf before, and so they've, they've gotten to the 11th hour, and they've made a deal. So right now, the market is not all that concerned, but if we get, as, as we get closer, certainly the market, and we have seen a little bit of increase in interest rates uh, in, in anticipation and of this. And don't we think that, I mean, I was sort of alarmed this morning when, I mean, you know, Michael and I have been through this before in the 90s, where where, you know, you know that there are, you know, sort of things you can do to kind of buy yourself a little time. But this morning when Jack Lou says, no, 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 that was in May when we October 17th is really when oh, I've, yeah. I'm, I've run out of measures. I mean, that seemed to be that alarmed me. I would think markets would well, react to that. Well, let's be clear. I mean, it, it depends on if the government's going to pay the interest on the debt and it may do so in return for closing down the Justice Department and letting all the FBI people uh, on for, bring them on furlough. But one way or the other, if the government does not borrow, about 30 percent of government spending must go away and must decline. That is a shock to the economy that will most certainly punch the economy into recession. There is no doubt about that. Whether or not we breach that we don't pay the, the uh, interest on the debt and we default on the debt, that's a different question. OK, and then that's why I have my lawyer here. To, <laughs> to you need talk, your lawyer. I know, I know. <laughs> to talk about some to talk about what the options are. I mean, the president. So some of the options we have a full screen on this one is use uh, Section 4 of the 14th Amendment, ignore the debt ceiling and pay our bills, mint a $1 trillion coin, or get Republicans on board. I think the last one is the hardest. So talk to me about what the president's options are, Michael. Th this would all make the founding fathers wig hair stand on end. You know, <laughs> I'm this, sure it would. These, these are the kinds of issues that they were grappling with in trying to create a strong, effective government that could pay its bills. These were the issues that were around at the time of the American Revolution and the French Revolution and throughout our country's history. The president has is right in saying we've had government shutdowns before, but we've never really had anything close to the kind of default that we're talking about. So what powers does he have? Well, th there are strong arguments to be made that he has the power to do a variety of ways of doing this unilaterally, but none of it is a clear case. So the 14th Amendment says that the debt of the United States shall not be questioned. There's only one Supreme Court case that's ever really looked at that. And it seems to say that, uh, that, that you don't want to not be passing a law that says you can't pay what you've already obliged. But that's not really clear that that's going to hold up. But so there's two sides I've heard on that I want to ask you guys about. One argument says, go for it, because if you win, then this we don't ever have to have this problem again. The other argument I've heard is, having this tied up in the courts, probably not so good for our economy, probably not so good for the global economy. I'll take the first part of that, which is that uh, the United States debt and its dollar and its word is the 
bottom line benchmark foundation of the entire global financial system. The closer we get to potentially breaching that is not only a U.S. domestic economic issue, it's a global issue. And the closer we get to that, the more we will pay in a price for, for that over time. Now, there's nobody right now out there to take our place. Right. But if the United States gets into a place where it's unclear if we can pay, either legally or financially, our debt, there's going to be serious consequences so, Michael, to the United what States. Do we do? So, I mean, that's, that's a heavy but, load to have on the president's well, shoulders. But the, the bottom line is there are no good options. Congress has said this much in taxes you can raise, this much in spending you can do, and this much in debt uh, is allowed. And he may have to choose which unconstitutional option <laughs> to follow. I don't know why, as a negotiation matter, if nothing else, the administration doesn't just say, look, we're not going to let this happen. Now let's talk about the budget. Let's talk about the government shutdown. They've chosen not to do that. I think they think that puts more pressure on the Republicans. And I hope that's <laughs> true. But, uh, but, but there may come a moment if things get really bad where we would all expect the president to stand up and say, you know what? I don't care if this goes to court. I've got to do what I've got to do to protect the world happens, economy. Though, if, if you don't mind, which is that sure. it's, it's possible for the Republicans to get exactly what they want through this. As soon as we reach this place where the Treasury Secretary is out of, out of the ability to borrow, right. spending equals revenue immediate balanced budget. I'm not sure mm -hmm. that the Republicans, or at least some Republicans, are going to mind that situation. Well, except that the things that suddenly start getting cut are Social Security benefits, Medicare payments, right. troop payments, all these things that people don't want touched because they want the government spending cut. All right, you guys have just convinced me we need this trillion dollar coin. Problem mm -hmm. solved. We'll just pay it off. Steve Leisman and Michael Waldman, thanks to you both. Be sure to follow us online at Facebook and tweet us at MSNBC Disrupt. Let us know how you think the government shutdown should end.